Okay, we're going to do the two two notes now. Uh, we are going to take this activity where we use this this uh, notation for a derivative, the f prime of c from two one, and we're going to let x equal to c plus h and come up with a new expression. So in other words, where this x is, I'm going to plug in c plus h. So we're going to get the limit as x approaches c for f, and instead of that x, I'm going to plug in that c plus h minus f of c, and that's going to be all over, and again, I'm going to plug in c plus h again for this x here now, and minus c, so when I combine like terms, I'm going to get the limit as x approaches c for f of c plus h minus f of c all over and over here the c and this negative c are like terms that cancel each other out and I have h and that gives us this alternate form of a derivative another way to think of the derivative of the function of f when c x equals c is this alternate form of h and uh, we are going to let this c be zero when we do this and I uh, hope you can see that's going to give us zero over zero which is going to uh, be something we can fix in the future. So what's powerful about this definition of a derivative is that we don't use the value of c, but instead we use a variable x. So we're going to use x on that thing. And that's going to give us a general derivative at any point, which is going to be this formula on the next page. The definition of a, or the derivative of a function f prime is going to be this deal where we're going to be using h's instead of c's in here. And, and so we actually have three definitions of a derivative. This is one of the main ones right here. And then the, over here it says think about it. Sometimes the definition to the left is written as this function where they have a delta x instead of h. I talked about this uh, before and the question is what do you think delta x means? Well, delta x is the change in x. Delta means change in math. So this is the change in the variable x. Okay, the word derivative is a noun. Often directions may ask you to find the derivative of a function, or it may even say differentiate the function, means the same thing. And here, differentiate is the verb form of the derivative. So we want to do the di differentiation or do the derivative of f of x equals the square root of x to determine the, and determine the domain. So what we need to do is we are going to plug or say f of x equals this radical x. So that is this part. So we need to know that f of x plus h, the f of x plus h is going to equal the square root of x plus h because all I'm doing is putting that plus h in for the x. The x plus h is being, the x is being replaced with x plus h. So when I plug all that into this function up here, I'm going to do that f prime of x is going to equal the limit as x approaches zero. And again, I'm just plugging it right into this formula up here. And then we are going to have of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So now I'm going to plug in my values. I'm going to come up here and plug these values in where the f of x plus h was. So that's going to be the limit as x approaches zero. And then my f of x plus h is this part, the square root of x plus h minus my f of x. Well, this is the f of x part up here. So this is minus radical x all over h. So if I plug zero in here and zero in here, the numerator goes to zero, the denominator goes to zero, and now I got to use those rules we learned during unit one. So I'm going to multiply this by the conjugate because I have a binomial. Oops. I have a binomial with a radical. So when I FOIL conjugates, I'm going to get over here, the limit as x approaches zero. And 
And when you FOIL conjugates, you square the first term minus the square of the last term. On the bottom, you don't multiply them out because our whole goal is to get rid of. We want to get rid of the H. So up here, when you add like terms, I hope you see that minus X, positive X cancel. Those H's reduce. So I've got one over this thing, and I'm going to plug that zero in for my X's. I'm so I put X. I screwed up. It's supposed to be H. This is H. My bad. I plugged the H in, but I said X, and I've been writing X. These should be H's. So I plug zero in there, and that's going to be two radical X right there. And that is going to be the derivative of the square root of X up there. That the derivative of this is this value. So we're going to be doing a bunch of algebra again. So we're supposed to come down here and identify the parts by the definitions that we've had so far of, of limits expression for f prime. So this is going to be what happens when you simplify this whole thing. So what you kind of need to realize is that this could be written as 9 plus h minus the square root of 9 all over h. And I left off the word limit. I need to keep that in there. These are equal things. And the reason I did that was, this is h approaching 0. Uh, we needed a radical on both these parts. So what this tells me is that f of x is equal to this part over here, which is the square root of x and my c value, which is what we're plugging in for this thing right here, is 9. So that would be that first problem. Now this is kind of difficult to get this right. So I want you to uh, take some time and try and figure out what's going on here. Now this next problem is kind of the same type of deal. It's a little bit tough. And this part over here is going to help us because that, that part is looking like this thing up here with the delta x. So I hope you see this. So I hope you realize that the first part in your brackets, if you look up here, is the f of x plus delta. Whereas if you take the delta part out, that's going to be the f of x part. So what that tells me is my f of x part down here is going to be this 2 plus, now we don't want this delta x here to get the f of x value. And uh, they're telling us they're plugging negative 3 in for this thing right here. And this thing is cubed. So what we need to realize is that this is going to be plus x cubed because from way up here in this thing up here, if you remember the formula, is x plus delta x whatever. And since I cubed like that, if we take that cube off, that's where the 2 plus x cubed comes from because the delta x is not up here for the f of x part. And so the c part is the thing that they are plugging in for this x right here. So my c is going to be negative 3. So if I think about that over here, if I took 2 plus negative 3 cubed for this negative, that right there is going to be that negative 25 part that goes right there. So this stuff takes some practice. Uh, this is, this is kind of in this form up here because they are using all of this stuff right here. If you look at the coefficient of this, this q part, it's a 1, just like this coefficient's a 1. That coefficient's a negative 5, like that, negative 5. And this coefficient's is 4, like that. And the constant's negative 7, negative 7. So if you look up there at that one I just had, this thing right here, that thing right there is your f of x part right there. That is your f of x. So for that part down there, we get to say that f of x is equal to that deal we got right there. And I hope that you see that these up here had numbers, right? They had numbers that we needed to get C from. Well, there are no numbers plugged in here. And since we have all X's in here, that means for this that C is just equal to the X value. So this is pretty tough stuff. All right, we're going to stop there, and I'm going to make a copy of that. That's your two-two notes.